must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Man, in his affluence, wants life to be easy. He thinks he has it coming. He thinks he deserves an easy time. And so it's a very difficult thing in the West to encourage people to think about sacrifice, whereas in much of the world, sacrifice for a Christian is a way of life. It's presumed. It's part of the deal. Before ever you get saved, you know it's going to cost you, man. I wrote an editorial in Upwork Magazine, and it was called Bailing Out or Bailing Out. And I talked about the difference between bailing out when you're talking about a plane and bailing out when you're talking about a boat. When you're talking about a boat, you're saying, hey, we're in this thing together, and if somebody doesn't get bailing, we're going down. We don't have any other options. Let's be part of the solution. But when you talk about bailing out of a plane, you're saying, I give up. We're just going to let the thing crash. We're going to let her go. And you become part of the problem. You want the easy ride? You know what? The Lord will let you have an easy ride. I'll never forget when I learned that lesson. My dad gave me a job to do one Saturday morning, and I complained about it. Oh, Dad, I wanted to... He raised his hand and said, Fine, I'll do it. And I thought, boy, this is a nice arrangement. Well, you know, it was only a momentary thing. And then I saw my dad doing the work I was supposed to do when I came. I said, okay, I'll do it. He said, no, sorry, son. You missed your opportunity. Well, now, if he tried that with me when I was seven or eight, I would have liked the arrangement. But at the point in my life where I was, I realized what he was telling me. We just want willing service around here. You'll never get everybody willing to do the work. You might as well relax. You might as well forget it. Don't try and cattle prods don't work with the people of God. And in the days of Nehemiah, he didn't call for everybody to work. He just said, whoever has a willing heart, those are the people that I'd like to help me. If you're not willing, well then don't bother. Don't try and make God's people feel guilty about serving the Lord. I mean, what are we doing? So if the love of Christ doesn't constrain them, if the death of Christ isn't enough to motivate them to come to a friend, if it's not enough to motivate them to come and remember the Lord, then the Lord's going to have to do a work with them. I'm not going to be able to drag them out. You see, that was the old economy when God dragged people kicking and screaming through the wilderness. He said, I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to take you by the heart. It's not going to be must I, it's going to be may I. You'll want to do it. We've got it good. Not just when we get to heaven. We have the Comforter, the indwelling Spirit of God, the fellowship of His people. Every promise is true. And But to, to rest in it, to have peace and joy in believing. When the Queen of Sheba came a thousand miles across the desert sands because she'd heard about Solomon, her assessment of the situation goes like this. Happy are thy men. Happy are thy servants. It would be a great thing, wouldn't it? If people who looked at us said, well, I don't agree with them. I don't believe what they believe. But they sure are happy. <laughs> we ought to be happy people. It ought to be an impression that we give. We ought to be delighted to do the work of God, that he would ever think to ask us to participate in doing anything at all.